Monta Vista's last win over Camp Lindo was 41 years ago. Will the Mustangs finally get over the hump against the Cougars? You'll find out next. Welcome to Sam Zakheim Memorial Field on the campus of Monta Vista High School for this Friday night matchup between the Camp Lindo Cougars coached by Kevin Macy in his 28th season. They are 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Last week they tied with Windsor, or actually they had a bye last week, but their last game on September 8th they tied to Windsor. And so they're looking to regroup. And the Mustangs coming off a tough week last week on the road against Amador Valley. They lost 41-34. And we were the officials are at midfield with the coin flip. Bert Mahalicek is our referee going over the pregame. Bert's been doing this a long time, Coach. I'm joined by my broadcast partner, Craig Bergman. Very excellent referee and an even better person. Just an easy guy to communicate with. Not a lot of officials would communicate with you. He certainly was one that would. So the Mustangs will receive to open... But talking about last week's game, Coach, against Amador, with 8.29 left in the second quarter, they led, the Mustangs led 21-7, to were efficient on offense and scored three straight possessions. But then Amador Valley scored 28 straight points, helped by three Monta Vista turnovers and six offensive plays to honor America, our national anthem.
So, in the Mustangs, they gave up 292 yards rushing. They gave up three TD passes, and the backbreaker coach was a middle screen on fourth and 10, which went for a 36 yard touchdown, which was the difference of the game. Going into that game, Amador had scored a total of 21 total points in the three games. So, what are, you, what are some things that you would anticipate the Mustangs defense worked on during the week? Because you can understand that Kevin Macy's going to run a lot of those same plays tonight against the, the Mustangs. Well, when you watched last week, I thought that Amador had the, the physical mismatch uh, against Monta Vista. They were much bigger. They were more physical. And it showed up front. It, it, what Monta Vista's got to do is they've got to take care of the ball more offensively to keep their defense off the field. And those four turnovers, when you look at it, that's what led to 28 points, really. And, uh, you know, Monta Vista scored on five other possessions. And, you know, if they, if they do, if they score on half of the other possessions, that game's not close. So they, they can't turn the ball over. they got to do a much better job of trying to establish the defensive line of scrimmage to stop Campbell's run. Because if you're Kevin Macy, you're certainly looking at that going, we need to run the football. Three to keys effective. to victory first for the visiting Cougars, coached by Kevin Macy in his 28th season. They ha- we have to score 20 or more points. They haven't scored 20 points in regulation all season long. They have to hold the opponent to less than 20 points. Offense has been limited. The D needs to step up and win time of possession. Defense has spent a lot of time on the field in the first three games, according to Coach Macy, that it feels like six games. And we'll give you the Mustangs keys right after the kickoff. Dabroyuboff will kick off and he'll go into the end zone, and you'll see that a lot. He's got a capable leg. For Johnny Millard in his second season with the Mustangs, they need to, and Coach talked about this earlier, smart with the football, win the turnover battle. MV turned the ball over four times last week, three, te- three of those turnovers in five, six plays. Win at the line of scrimmage and explosive plays on O and D. The Mustangs, Braden Turner, the quarterback, throws for over 1,000 yards. Julian McMahon, the, the running back. Thomas Morquart, Strump. Archidera, Fry, and Gurney are up front. And it's a fast screen out here in the flat. And it picks up about three yards. Not a very good job of blocking on the edge. You'll look, one of the receivers right here runs right by the edge defender. Uh, right there. You gotta, that's the guy you got to block. you got to block the first threat. If they block him, you get a much better play. Shahada with the catch. His 17th reception. And you look at this Mustangs offense. They have... Three players that have over 15 reception. Kellen Ford with the trade to the tight end and motion across the formation, and it's 28 reach to McMahon, and he cuts it up way too soon, and Coach will break that down. One thing, we when you watch film on Camp Alindo, they play their linebackers. If you look right there, how tight they are. They want to run through the gaps. They don't want to get over the top of those things. If they're going to run through, you've got to stay on the outside of that run play. It's an outside zone. Julian's got to learn that that's going to hit outside further this week. The Mustangs have been real successful on their first possession of the game against Granada, San Leandro, Bellarmine, and last week against Amador. Well, they've got an uphill block climb here on third and seven. Looks like a three-step drop slant right down here. And it's an easy pitch and catch. And Shahada with his second reception on him. That will move the chains. Good throw by Turner. Good throw, good timing. He's got to pull that throw down, though. You go, you throw that thing up there high, you're opening up your receiver to a big hit, which he was able to avoid. Uh, you know, Now with the new rules, you really can't lay that lick on him, so it's, you're actually better off now than you were before. And Shahada will quickly go to the sidelines. I would expect and, a sprint here on this play. And Kenser is subbing in for him. Motion across the formation is Breedlove in a sprint right, 58, 58 sprint. And all that doesn't look like a big play, Coach, he'll take six yards every time. Second and five right there, second and four. Anytime you get yourself in that situation, it's like a broken record. We talk about it every week. Your whole offense is at your at Camp Alendo's defense has four sacks. They've created seven turnovers. The Cougars have a plus-two ratio. Their defense has only given up just over 14 points a game. And watch number eight, Crosby Kelly, really good football player on the edge. McMahon running through tackles and a move the chains and the Mustangs with their second first down of the game. Really nice play. They're going to kick out the end on this side. They're going to pull the right guard, excuse me, the center. They're going to pull the center this week, kick out the left end. 
Uh, it's a little kick play. It hits up inside of that. Nice looking play. Really well well executed. We love new run plays. Haven't seen the center pull, so it's a great call there by offensive coordinator Joey Winger. 28 reach, and the ball's on the ground. McMahon doesn't recover, and it's a turnover for the Mustangs. Just the mesh point was not good. We have a flag, and I don't know if it's an offsides. We'll see what the call is. And I believe this is on the Mustangs, and it's an illegal chop block. Probably two men engaged at the same time, one high, one low. It's probably the center. You know, when you're running this play, you're, actually, you're asking the center, which... And right there, that's not a that's not a two that's not a high low right there. That's probably not a great call. It looked like the guard the guard and the tackle were not engaged with that that two technique, and the center came over, cut him on his own. I I didn't see it there. Isaiah Ortiz will get the start for Coach Macy. Twenty eight of forty nine on the season, two hundred sixty three yards and two interceptions. He's looking for his first career touchdown pass, and it's a sweep and it'll pick up four yards. That's Tim Doherty. Play, both two-way player for the Cougars. Just a simple little zone play right there. They're handed to the wing back going in motion. They're up front is McAlverty, Harris, Walker, a ball, and Anderson up front for the Cougars in white. They'll go with a three-receiver set with a receiver at the top of the screen, and it's a slant route, and it goes incomplete. Ability to call that play when you pick up uh, four to six yards on first down. Really, I tell you what, very close to being picked six the other way. I mean, the flat defender actually read it well and stepped in front of it, but ran right by it. The Cougars are very balanced, Coach. 52% pass, 48% run. And they have done a good job of... of Mix and matching and, and trying to take care of things with injuries, etc. And it's a little bubble screen to Doherty, and not much there. Picks up a couple of yards. Looks like they might keep their offense out and go for this. They're, you know, they they want. They say they got to score more than twenty points, and uh, you don't get many opportunities where you're inside the opponent's forty. So you got to take advantage of that. And you know, Coach Macy been doing this a long time. Um, what you like about veteran coaches. There's no hesitation. They're going for it. We could also see a freeze play. Yes. You know, this is a scenario where if my Coach, what do you do when we side. freeze? Now, they ran a lot of this in, pra- in, the, in warm-ups, this formation. Unbalanced look. And it's a reach play, and it doesn't go anywhere. Complimentary football coach for the Mustangs. They turn the football over, and then Torrin Dumphy, the sophomore with 20 tackles this season, makes a big play, and the Mustangs will take the ball over on downs. Really nice job. you got a lot of hats to the ball right there. Yeah, one thing i got to see a little bit more of, though, when Campolindo went and they went to an unbalanced set there, they actually covered up the tight end and brought the split-in receiver across where they were unlo- overloaded. No adjustment by Monta Vista, but they were still able to get the stop. So the Mustangs will take over on their own 37 Sprint out by, he's got to just be more careful with the football. Would you like to see him just continue to attack the sideline here, Coach? Yeah, you know, with the new, the way the rules are now in high school, you continue stretching that. You can just throw it in past the down marker and not a big deal. And it's just uh, keep, go, keep playing the next down. Don't take a chance and try and force it right there. He, I know he wanted to throw it away, but he's got to be more selective with that. He's thrown three interceptions in the last two weeks. So he's got to really value the possession of the football. Young quarterback. It's a draw. And the Mustangs have just not picked up many yards on that draw this year, Coach. And that was a staple of our offense. He picks up three and he'll make it third and seven. I'd like to see them change the way they're blocking that. Uh, you know, it, The way they're blocking it right now, it really doesn't get a tackle up on that linebacker that, right there that makes that play. The tackle's got to throw through a little quicker to get to that backer. And we mentioned his name. Crosby Kelly, he makes the tackle, and it's going to be third down. And imagine Campolino will bring a little heat here. Watch the edge. And only bring four, and it's incomplete. DB is all over the receiver, but not called. Jake Spencer with the pass defense, and it'll be fourth down for the Mustangs. And they'll 
Jungi will come on and punt. We got to get we got to get Jihada to, to threaten the outside a little bit more on that slant. He's got to threaten his outside to stretch that inside area. He, if you just go right away, the guy's going to come over the top of it every time. Straight, you know, sell it outside, come back underneath. Go the opposite way, you're going to eventually cut. Jungie's nearly averaging 37 yards a punt. Campolindo will have two returners back. Our old speed fake is perfect when they try and bump you down the field like this. Fair catch. Oh, and well, it's that off hit his him. Foot. That hit him. That's off his foot. And that's Montevist. Should be Montevista football. Yeah, it that hit should his be Montavista's football. That, that hit, hit his right foot. off his toe. Yeah, Montavista football. Montavista football. Good eyes, coach, and the director Luis Rangel's all over it. Bernardi got a little too cute, coach. It hit him right in the foot. We could hear. You could see literally it. hear it. Watch. Great call. Fernando Russell, the back judge. Burt McCollichek, Cam Jones, Dave Mulvey, Patrick Llewellyn, and the back judge is Fernando Russell. And it's a muff punt. It's not really a turnover. The Mustangs will take it. They take a shot here, Coach? Well, it looks like they could get a blitz on this. Oh, X fast green. And... Just a couple yards. Look like... There was a little bit more opportunity than what the Mustangs actually got out of this. It was, it was supposed to be a middle screen coming inside. He kind of stopped because he saw a guy in there. He should belly back more and come back in, but I don't think they got a guard out on the, on the alley defender that would have set that up for a lot more yardage. But still, positive play. Second and, second and down for the Mustangs. And I want to explain what we meant in the open. These teams' first game was back in 1968. They haven't exactly played each other a lot. And that goes through defenders' hands and off the shoulder pads of an intended Mustang receiver. Turner, plenty of time to throw the football and hits off the little hip turn and it goes incomplete. And it's another third and long for the Mustangs. So the last played in 1968, the must or first started playing in 1968. The Mustangs won in 1982. Campo won last year, and we'll see what goes on this season. Turner with the two route and setting Ford up for a rib cage hit, and then Mustangs probably on a hold, and that's the call. Would you like to see on this crossing just to slow down a little bit, or is it just a bad read to throw it right into a defender? You know, I think if he holds that just a hair longer, you're going to see a dig route coming in behind him that's going to, because the guy who came up and hit him left that dig route, there's a big void in the defense, and he's got to let that guy clear. So it takes just a hair longer, and if he and, uh, there wasn't enough pass room. When they're rushing four like that, you got to realize it. You should so see here's all 22, Coach. Explain the dig routes. At the dig route up top, route. you're going to see him right in here. Well, the safety jumped it, too. They, you know, the coverage that they were playing wasn't quite what they, I think Montevist was expecting. They've been a, a, a predominantly three-deep team. They've shown a lot of two-deep in the game so far. So now it's third and 17, and you talked about it's okay to punt. What do you mean when you say that? You know, don't force the ball. Don't give them an opportunity to get a turnover and take the ball to 50. If you have to punt, knock them inside the 10, make them go 90 yards. So be, sec be selective with this. McMahon, there he goes. The 30, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Monta Vista, 48 yards, Julian McMahon. This is, we had not even, it's on my list of things to talk to you about, is getting Julian out in space and giving him some opportunities where he doesn't have to bang into people. He just outruns the coverage here. You know, and a great job of keeping the play alive by Braden. Braden, uh, Braden Turner stayed in the pocket. He Instead of running outside, he stepped up in the pocket and then floated left, found his running back wide, wide open with a mismatch against the linebacker. Okay, so if Coach Macy declines that penalty, it would have been fourth and seven. You know, that's uh, shoulda, coulda, woulda. You know, that's one of those 50-50 things that, 
you know, fourth, we're in the scenario we probably would have gone for it. Monta Vista probably would have gone for it, so at least this put him in a scenario where, uh, you know, put him back further. And the Mustangs make a kick, and it's something that they've, some, they, we'll talk about when we get back, but there's McMahon, and nobody's going to catch Jules. Touchdown, Monta Vista. You're watching Mustang football on NorCal Sports TV. Monta Vista football on NorCal Sports TV, presented by American Asphalt, is brought to you in part by Ned Milan and Morgan Stanley, seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. Spitz Jewelers, making memories for over 75 years in Walnut Creek. Persevere Lending, we have capital available for you. And American Asphalt, taking care of business in the Bay Area for over 40 years. The Mustangs, Junkie made the extra point, and they and the Mustangs have had three returns this year for touchdowns on punts and kicks. But they're leaving points on the field. They've missed five PATs, and not all of that is on Junkie. They've had problems with uh, blocking, overall execution. So they something they need to really get down. And you, when you have a chance to score, if it's one, two, seven, three, whatever it may be. You got to put those points up. Well, it's an entire battery. You got the center, you got the snapper, you got, I mean, the holder. It's a and team the effort, most certainly. Directional kick at the 15 yard line. And Scott Lyon with the return. And Campolindo. Stop. Stop the. And here's that kick. Campo will take over on their own 34 yard line. Make it the 33 with 519 here in the first quarter. Thanks for everybody that's joining here tonight from Monta Vista and on the World Wide Web. Motion is going to be countered, and Amador ran this a lot. McMahon with the tackle, and also we've said his name. This is the second time the sophomore, Torn Dumphy. And it's a short game for Campolindo. When Amador ran that play, they had a lot more beef heading up in the hole yes. than Campo. And, and that means that they can, Monte Vista could probably withstand those, down, those double teams and those down blocks a little bit more and, and, withhold, and, and withstand the, at the point of attack better. Empty set for the Cougars. It's going to be a quick pass or a quarterback draw. And that's a lateral. No whistles blown, and this is going to, Wow. Are they calling it a deflection? I, it was tipped. I believe it was tipped by the defensive end. And it may or may not have been a lateral, but it certainly went backwards after the hit. Yeah. Good job by Elliott Price of getting his hand in the passing lane, and it's third and nine for Campo. And they're on a three-by-one set here. Mustangs trying to get off the field after the score by McMahon. Ortiz back to pass. Corner route. And it's complete. Well-timed, well-thrown. Doherty with the catch. His 14th reception of the season. And it's a first down at midfield for Coach Macy and his Cougars. Really nice layered route, as Coach Bargeman would like to say, bean dip. Yep. Layers right there, but really nice touch by the quarterback throwing it over the first level of the defense, dropping it right into the bucket. And when we say layers, it's an e it's a layered read for the quarterback. You're not scanning the field. You're looking at a certain area, making that read, and, and Ortiz with the dime, and the Cougars, that was 12 men on the field. No call. Fly motion by Doherty. And it's a screen out here, Leo, and they've got it set up pretty well, but then Jones takes care of the blocker and makes the play. If he doesn't make a play, this is how you use your hands and shed a blocker, Talon Jones. That was a big-time play right there. Talon runs right through the defender, big offensive lineman. You'll see him right there on the ground. And then breaks down in space, makes the play one-on-one. -on -one. And he's on the ground because Talon went right through him. Using his hands. He didn't avoid him. Just nope. a better look at it right here. You'll see Talon, number 10, come right through the lineman. Oh, he's just off the screen, but you see him keep running through the play, breaking but down But he blocked space. him onto the screen, so we'll give him credit anyway. Second and short. Kelly in motion. And 
there was a movie, and I can't say the line, but it's going to be a hold on Campolindo. This looked like a clothesline back in the old day, but I, where I, th I think I broke his neck. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But that's Mateo Congdon playing with a lot of passion and energy. 19 tackles on the season, and then after a nice pickup by Campo on first down, second down, they're called for the hold, and now they're going to be playing behind the chains. Mateo's had such a great year. You know, him playing quarterback makes him understand the game from a different aspect. And as a defensive back, you're looking at it through the eyes of the quarterback, and you understand what he's trying to do, where the ball's going to go, and I really think it's translated to him defensively this year because he's around the ball consistently. Yeah, I had a great talk with him. And the, before the, the game, he was walking in and said, a lot of respect for you, young man, to come out and accept that you're not going to be the starting quarterback, play defense, and, and be elected a team captain. So second and 12 now for the Cougars. Ortiz, quick route, catch, first down, and then some. That is a big gain. Explosive play. An explosive play is over a 20-yard pass play and well-timed route and Doherty working the magic. Well-timed coach and then poor tackling by Congdon. Just a five-step hit and throw, speed cut out to the outside. Very tough to defend when thrown on time and with a decent route. He threw it off his back foot. That could come down in the future. That could come back to haunt him because that ball's going to float when you do that. Cougars. And lay the ball on the ground, but then Ortiz still is able to pick up two and a half yards on a broken play. Nice job. He pulls out a little bit early, and I think the ball hits his fingertips. Heads up play, just getting it and get what you can. Doherty is in motion nearly every play, so you've got to respect his speed, and he's already had a big couple of big catches for Campolindo. They host Benicia next week to open the Diablo Foothill League. Ortiz, all day to throw. It's a post route, and it's complete for a touchdown. You know, you can see this coming a mile away. For the last two plays, we've talked about Mateo being real aggressive in the run game. The play before that, he was aggressive as well, and they must have seen that, and they came right back to a post over the top of it. You'll see him. He bites up on the run fake. It was Ugh. something you can't do as a free safety. No, yeah. no help over the middle and Ravellos with the 22, the 22 yard uh, touchdown reception on, we call it the eight route over the top, and the Cougars answer on the on the drive after the touchdown, and we're all tied up at seven, and that's the Mustangs. They've given up. Touchdowns of 20 yards, 20 yards, 15 yards, 65 yards, 36 yards, and then that one for 22. Can we see that one more a time? A lot of big plays. You know, and Monavis has got to get start getting a little bit of heat. they got to create some pass rush. If that means bringing a few more guys, they're going to have to. You can't give them this kind of time back there. I mean, it's max protection, Coach. It's a two-man route. Two-man route. Two-man route. Got to, you got to get help over the top. It's a curl and an eight route. And it's simple Simon for the Cougars. So they go 67 yards in two minutes and seven seconds. And it all started with that corner route to Doherty and then Rovellos with the eight route over the top to Broliboff to kick off and perfect kick to the one-yard line. And Campolindo. Ten players on special team around the football, and the Mustangs will start on their own 20-yard line with 301 left in the quarter. And nice to see your mom here today, my wife here at the game, um, and talking about wives. The band get, get back together. The band getting back together. Kevin Macy's wife, Claire, She's been through it thick and thin. 43 years of coaching. She's had a few late meals. There's a 12th player on the field for Campolindo that ran on. It doesn't matter. McMahon, cut back. Inside the 45, down to the 43. Julian McMahon. And we, we run a reach week there, Coach. Run a reach week. Those linebackers are up in there so tight. 
It's tough for them to get over the top. It's tough to, for them to run through. Makes it easy scheme for the for the offensive lineman where they know who's blocking who. When the so linebacker's a little deeper, on consecutive it's plays, McMahon's gone for thirty-seven and thirty-eight. One via the pass and one via the run. Twenty-eight pitch, and if Julian stays outside, there is room to run. I might want to go next door and tell the coaches. 28 toss. And the Mustangs got to... Had the edge blocked. You know, and that's a play that's actually designed specifically to go outside, not to cut back. You're blocking it to go outside. And so you, as a running back, you've got to understand that. So you're helping the team. You're helping your opponent run inside on that play. And then we've got a procedure on the Mustangs. Last week, they had a number of pre-snap penalties. There's the procedure, and I believe that one's on Clawson. And then lined up offsides four or five times, and you're, you're just helping your opponent um, by well, just misaligning, really. Well, and, and now you're in second and 12, which is what we preach every time, is playing front of the chain. Well, they prefer to be third and 17. This is really their <laughs> hot spot of this offense for Joey. We know it. And this is a scenario you don't need to get it all back. Try and get half it back, six or seven. Put yourself in a makeable situation for third down. Mustangs need to get a receiver on the line of scrimmage on this side. They don't. Oh, no, they're going to trade the tight end with Ford. Back judge hasn't counted. Now he is. They better snap it. Play action pass. Eight route over the top, and it goes in complete. Great coverage by Jake Spencer. Good coverage. Probably not the best time to throw play action because I don't think the defense is going to buy the fact that you're just running a simple dive play in there to uh, on third and 12 or second and 12. Can you play that back? There's a crosser that is absolutely wide open on this, Coach, and I think it's Ford. I'm not sure. No, Ford's back to pass. Yeah, right there. They didn't, even, they didn't pick him up. They I lost think him. that's Shahada. He is wide open. So sometimes you can just take that eyes to that deep route and come down to, to the second level. Turner was going to step up, and then it's another drop. He's looking to run. You always got to catch it first, run second. We always preach that. And if you look at this on the replay, you'll see his head just peak a little bit right before the catch, and that's just enough to take your eyes off it and drop the ball. So you know you're, you know you're going to have to do something with it after you run, and, and, but you still have to secure that catch first. So if you're the Mustangs here, you're gonna, you would like to pin your opponent inside the 20-yard line. Carter Jungi will take this snap at his own 41-yard line. Campo, dual receivers back. And Jungi took a lot of time, and it's going to be a short kick, but it'll take a Monta Vista bounce. Right into the hands of Luke Bernardi, the junior, and he picks it up, does a nice job, and gets Campo out to oh, about the 24-yard line with a minute left in the first quarter. And you hit it on the head. He took way too much time, and you know the people in the, the, the opposing coaches, they're looking at that going, we can block one of those if he's going to do that. So Monta has got to get to him and say, you got to speed up your tempo. You've End of get the play, we've going. got a block in the back, Coach, I believe on number 37, 97. Well, right, well away from the play. Right in front of the officials. So it's still it's going to be first and 10, but instead of having the ball in the 25, more than likely it's going to go back to the 15. And a heads-up play by Campolindo when that ball's rolling to pick it up, not let it keep going. That's a pet peeve of ours, that lost yardage. And we talk about that. Is Let's say the punt hits and it drops back 12 yards. That's a first down, at least one more first down that you already have to get. And it doesn't go in a stat sheet. It's lost yardage. And it's funny, in this era of new-gen stats, that you don't ever see that really measured. Boy, are you right. At, at and at level. that level, though, they're more than likely. So we have offsetting penalties. So they're going to re-kick or just put the ball at the 25? Uh, 
Okay, he both these penalties have to be on Campo Lindo. They're not offsetting, but Burt did signal against Monta Vista and Campo. And it looked like he had the offsetting sign. Right. right. I don't know what type of charades player Bird is, but he needs to work on his signals anyway. Again, a KG guy, veteran. He's been he was doing it before we started coaching. Just a good good human being. We do not have enough officials. And he and Fernando also, they do youth games. Yes. And they do they'll do four he'll games do, tomorrow. And he'll do basketball on Sunday. Deep ball. Nice coverage by the Mustangs. I think we're going to get a hole, definitely a, a bump down the field by the Mustangs. The ball was in the air. Are they faking him. the screen here, Coach, and running the wheel off it? Yes, they are. They're faking a little pump, and then they run the wheel off the guy who blocked on the last time. And there was definitely there was a lot of uh, bumping going on down the road on that play. As you watch it down the sidelines, you'll see. I love our all 22 camera. Right, right really there, a little hold right there. Slowed him down. Might have been better off that he held him. So, so this is going to be uh, marched off from the line of scrimmage. It looked like we got a hold and a pass interference. I think the hold came before the pass interference. On the same player? On the same player. Regardless, it's a penalty, on, first down by a penalty for the Mustangs and, or for the Cougars via the Mustangs, and it's a first down. Doherty in motion once again, and it's counter. And shooting right through the hole and picking up seven yards. Matthew Sugiyama running downhill with his fifth carry of the season. Hits this hole hard, Coach. He hits the hole hard, you know, and Monta Vista did a nice job of shutting the original hole down. He cut that back one behind it. Uh, and, and that's probably a linebacker overrunning the play, giving him the cutback lane. So you talk about play action passes. Here's an opportunity for the Cougars. They'll just straight drop back, and it's a quick hitch out here in the flat to Ravellos, who caught the touchdown pass earlier, and it'll chain mover for the Cougars. And that's about the third time they've taken advantage of the soft cushion that Montevis has given those wideouts. And, you know, take it, with it, it as, we, as we talk about. It's just a long handoff. So and this is an offense. Connection. Sorry, Coach. This is an offense that's only scoring 14 points a game. And that's probably going to be the last play of the first quarter. No. No, it is the last play of the first quarter. We'll come back. Mustang 7, Cougar 7. You're watching Monta Vista Football. On uh, NorCal Sports TV. Ned Milan has over 19 years of experience in the financial industry, serving individuals, their families, business owners, and corporate executives. Ned proactively helps to develop a comprehensive financial plan in order to provide the appropriate investment strategy for clients. This includes retirement and estate planning, asset management, tax planning, and liability management. Please contact 1998 Monta Vista alum Ned Milan to develop a plan for your family. Ned Milan at Morgan Stanley, seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. So the Mustangs scored after the holding the Campo on downs, or after the turnover, McMahon with the big run. But then the Cougars came back and Ravellos with the eight route over the top to tie the game up. Fly sweep motion, Doherty with the carry. And again, Cougars four yards, five yards, six yards on first down. And doing a great job of mixing up a little bit of inside, a little bit of looks, outside. Coach. A lot, a of, lot of looks, coach. A lot of looks. Spreading the ball around to a lot of guys. You know, not get not giving Monta Vista just one thing to look at. They're hitting him inside with the counter. Lions They've got a little three step drop, running outside on a fly sweep. Lions had a catch. Doherty's had a couple of catches. Ravellos with a couple of catches, and and Coach Macy was looking to establish some type of balance on offense. And we've got a fast screen out here to Lion, and again picks up four yards. 
And, you know, they're in a situation here. They've got their whole playbook open right in front of them. Good execution with the blocking out here. You know, they're just a very well-coached team. You can see the way they play. They understand the game. Uh, you know, the coaches have, have put a good game plan together. Uh, uh, Mixon, as we said, was 40%, 52% to 48% run pass. I mean, Kevin, and, Kevin, you know, they're D1 this year, but I, I gave him a lot of respect. They've won six NCS titles. He's got two state championships. You're D1, and you basically have earned it. Like it or not, but Coach Macy, he's going to have his Cougars compete every single time. Short route, but it's going to be completed for a first down. Uh, Breedlove came up with the tackle, but this we just called this 96, all hitch, or all hitch, 94. And this is defended well. They actually jumped it. They almost got the pick. You know, that's setting it up for a little hitch and go, though, down the road. Wouldn't be surprised if we see another double move coming up here soon. If we're gonna But he won't call things. it this play. No, he'll call we it We see a lot of road. coaches do that, and it's not me running scout team. He'll, he'll eventually come back to that feather in his pocket. First and ten, and there it goes. It's fake. Now... Same. This is my. They actually did go back the, to close to the yeah, same thing. A little but this move. might be his best throw of the game. And please explain what you mean when he says this is the best throw of the game. Oh, it's a great throw because he doesn't. He, he, that, there's no messing around here. That thing is way out of bounds. Not even close to anybody. Not going to take a sack. Not going to throw an interception. Going to live to see a second and ten. He's looking for one receiver, and the design of the play is for the guy to be wide open, and he wasn't. And he just threw the ball away. Young quarterbacks, take note. Ortiz, the senior, with a great play of just throwing the ball away. Second and ten. And that one's up for grabs. And Julian's got to make a play on that. Because if he does, there is time to pull out the bass guitar, and he runs right along the sideline. Bow, bow, bow. Great job by Julian of just sinking into this route. He just keeps sinking right into it. you got two coming to your zone. And Show that again. Coach... You foot fake the flat, and you sink to the deeper route. A lot of high school kids aren't capable of this, and I love how Julian plays this play. Well, you keep everything in front of you, and you can always react to something that happens in, in, you know, in front of you. You can't react to something that's behind you. You're chasing from behind the whole time. Reminds me, he made his first career start this week for the Falcones. Nate Lamb, I hope you're watching tonight, Nate. We've got a timeout. Camp Alindo. We'll take a quick break. You're watching Monta Vista Football on Workout Sports TV. Family-owned and operated since 1946 as a full-service jewelry store, Spitz Jewelers has remained true to our founding philosophies. Founded on the tradition of service, quality, and value, today we proudly continue that tradition from the smallest request to the most intricate custom design. We love what we do, and with three generations of success as our inspiration, we look forward to continuing these traditions into the future. Come see us at 1333 North Main Street in Walnut Creek. Spitz Jewelers making memories for over 75 years. Go Mustangs. So Coach Macy with the timeout. And Ortiz has had his best night of the season throwing the football. And he got his first career touchdown to Ravello's Empty backfield. Ortiz, nice defense by the Mustangs. Ortiz stared this one down, Coach, and Shahada's all over it with the pass defense. Yeah, and he was a little bit late. Uh, they got a little greedy there trying to push it to the chains. You know, that's a scenario there where I think if they only go five or six-yard route, they complete it, they probably go for it on fourth down like they did before. Trying to get it all in one fell swoop, that's not the kind of, uh, of throw that Ortiz makes really well. He's been doing a nice job of the underneath stuff, taking advantage of what they give him. Got to put a little bit more zip on that play. Tabroliaboff will punt. Capable leg. The Mustangs need to catch this football. And they don't. They let it hit the ground. There's six yards lost. 11 yards lost. 13 yards lost. The ball will be at the six-yard six yard line. line. Should have been at close to the 20. So uh, the thing you watch... Is special teams is the depth of these punters, and you practice that all week, and you and you you're going to line him up where you want to be, and the goal is 
we didn't really want to put in a fancy return with our defenses. Um, we were just excited to get the ball back, but catch the ball. Coach Bargeman would watch the punter before practice, before the game, every punt he made, and he'd know exactly where to line the guy up, and he'd make sure that's where he lined up. Julian McMahon with the carry. And he picks up, ends up picking up four on first down. So the Cougars need to defend the whole field. You know, Matavis has got to, I think they've been a little bit too cute offensively. I think they've run the ball pretty effectively. They've got to establish a little bit more run game right here. Counter. And as ordered by Coach Bergman. And that is three 20-plus yard touches for the junior, Julie McMahon. Just running through turnstile attempt tackles. You know, you got a big physical runner like him. I mean, this is the type of series where he might get seven or eight carries in one drive and, and carry you right down the field. And plan to rest him on defense if you have to. McMahon still picks up four yards. Keep pounding the rock right there. And, 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 Montevis is going to have to see that, that Campo's overloading to the weak side right now, and this is what we call a check with me playing. The quarterback's got to check where this ball is going to go. He can check right or left. He's, it, it's, it's not necessarily weak or strong. It's right or left because you're going to look at where the defensive tackles are lining up, and you're going to go towards the one technique. And a one technique is just inside shade of the guard, not outside shade. And we've been running to the guy who's on the outside shade. It's much harder to block. Fleet formation for the Mustangs. Breedlove in, form, in motion. It's 28 reach, and McMahon cuts it back, and oh my goodness, another chain moving first down for Jules. This is a one cut and downhill and bring it. You know, this, this is what they need to keep, keep doing what they're doing. Don't get cute. Don't put yourself in second and ten. Keep running the rock. Force them to come up and defend the run. That's going to open up those passes down the road. You might go eight or nine runs in a row right here. And, uh, and that's all that's going to do is soften that defense up and force them to stop you, and that opens up your passing game. Uh, back in the day, I'd be going, Coach, you're not going to run it eight times in a row, will you? I don't think you will, and you just keep running it. Play action pass. Turner thrown into coverage, and it goes incomplete. There's three defenders there. You've got a deep in route, that's, and he's got time to throw the football. So the Mustangs go play pass after consecutive runs. You know, I, I don't mind. I like the play call, but you got you got to have something underneath that, to throw to because if they're going to take away that fo that deep route, well, first of all, they should be running the ball. You've had effect. You you're, make them stop your run before you go back to that. That's a good second and two play. Probably not a great first down play. Second and ten, Mustangs three by one set. Ford in the slot, and it's reach weak. It'll make it third down and seven. For Monta Vista. And if you're Monta Vista here, you got to have a, are you, what's your mindset? Are you going to go four down or are you going to go three down? If you're going to go four down, you can continue to run the ball right now. You make that decision now based off this play. Leading tacklers are Giordani and Erickson. 27 tackles each for Coach Macy. I don't know what the heck's going on there. And it's fourth down. Everybody played like there was a whistle. But Campo obviously didn't hear a whistle either. Did the center snap it early? So that's a two-yard loss for the Mustangs. That's another mental mistake. You can't have those mental. You're throwing downs away. So Jungi will come on to kick. Doherty is one of the receivers back, and Bernardi at the bottom of your screen. Jungi needs to speed this up a little bit. Campos put on some heat. There it is. There's a block punt. That's 100% on the punter. I mean, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. You got to hurry up. 
takes a lot of time here, Coach. You know, and, and one of the things as a punter, you've got to be moving towards the line of scrimmage with that ball in the air on your snap. You can't wait for the ball and then start your steps. Your steps start when that ball is snapped, and you should catch the ball one two punt. And you, you need it's to get a the, turnover. It's a turnover. It's it basically for all intents and purposes, it is another turnover. And we talked about him earlier, Crosby Kelly with the block punt. Campo takes over on the 50-yard line, and second run for him is Sugiyama. And that is a 16-yard chunk explosive play for the Cougars. The 5'6 junior just running right through tackles. Nice downhill run by him. So, Coach Macy, you going to run the ball a little bit? We're going to run the ball a little bit. I formation here. Got to watch the tight end, Kelly, in line. And they needed to make a play, and Talon Jones is there running downhill, well, Coach. Much better job, you know, out of Talon of filling that hole. You know, in the play before that, the overran it, got over the top, the ball cut back. That time he didn't. He, he was patient with it. And he got over the top and made the play. Second and 10 for Campo. Ortiz throw over the middle and then nearly intercepted. Breedlove gets a little bit better jump on that and uses two hands. That's a pick six, Coach. He's he, right in the passing lane. He read that very well, and Ortiz stares it down right there. It doesn't get over his front foot. We talked about it before, and there's a lot of, a lot of float on that ball, and you can't have that kind of float if you're throwing a skinny post. It's got to be on the line. You talked about some heat, and Dakota Dixon, the sophomore, who's had five sacks this year for the Mustangs, got a good push up front. You won't see it in the stat sheet, but he definitely hurried Ortiz enough. And it's third and ten, which I'm assuming is four down territory for Coach Macy. They've been throwing a lot of quick screens and things like that out of this down. Sideline out route and incomplete. Congdon with the defense. Nice running right with his hip, reading the cut. And once again, if you watch his footwork, see if he's they're stepping going out. For it. He steps left when he needs to, he needs he's opening up too much. That's an all arm throw. Like to say hello to my friend Steve Davidson in Loveland, Colorado, watching the broadcast tonight. Steve, a new fan of mine, saw him back in Pittsburgh on your guys' whirlwind trip that we'll talk about a little bit later in Strong the game. Strong suffering Angels fan. That's him and Tommy's fault. Ortiz, there's a takedown, no call, and complete. Got to make a play on that ball. I like to see Johnny Breedlove get up and go get that ball. Don't wait for the kid to catch and it. And we've got a hold. That was an easy call, Coach. That was a takedown right in front of Burt Mahalachek. And that should put them in, punting, in a yes. punting situation. But I like Kevin running the corner out. He completed it. It just had a hold. Another viewer we have is one of the most beloved teachers at Monta Vista. Stacey Bricks is home watching it. Love to have Stacy on the program. Huge Monta Vista supporter. Been, been do, here and contributing for a long, long time. Long time. And that's great. Big part of Monta Vista. Some come and go and some stay and are duly noted. So, Debrol Yaboff. I worked on that all week, Coach, because I knew you'd get tested with me. I'm very Back proud of you. Back to punt, Debrol Debrol your boff. He is the epitome of punters. The short punt. It's and this ground. will take a bounce for Monta Vista. And they'll get the ball on the 21-yard line. Where they started the last drive of the six-yard line went run, 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 run. And then got a little cute. Yeah, don't deviate from a game plan if it's working. Stay with it. Go out there you're going a little Billy uh, Bean on me. If your opponents are making mistakes, don't interrupt them. Just impose your will on them and, and run the ball right down the throat. Counter. 
and you got guys standing in the hole, and what are – I know what your answer is going to be, but what are pullers do? Pullers have got to run. Just keep running. Don't stop. You know, if you run through a hole untouched, that back should be right behind you running through untouched. Watch, watch the uh, Bay Bridge traffic here because the Mustangs stop in the hole. And also credit Campo's defense for getting a hand and some physicality at the point of attack. So it's a four-yard loss. No, no gain for the Mustangs, second and ten. Campo likes to crowd the line of scrimmage. Breedlove. And it's intercepted. Luke Bernardi, the junior, and Breedlove stared that one down. And it's another turnover for the Mustangs. So they had the block punt. And then here's the, in the fumble by McMahon. And then the interception. These kind of interceptions are going to happen. He made the correct read there. It was a poor throw. He threw it too far off the guy. But he made the right read. He went to the inside route to the outside route. Guy was open. He just missed him. Those kind of interceptions are going to happen. So that the, was not one that was uh, off of a mistake about not So far, away. Campolindo has not taken advantage of the turnovers, and they pick up eight yards on the throw out in the flat to Scotty Lyon, who's busy tonight. When I say some, th- some interceptions, you can't avoid. You're going to make poor throws. They're going to make good plays. That was not because of a decision right there. That was just a poor throw right there. Made the right read, which is what his feet were good in the pocket. Can't complain that. Those things happen. Second and two for the Cougars, and they'll run the fly sweep. And the Mustangs are all over it. And Breedlove with the tackle, held by Julian McMahon, and it'll make it third down. Look like they might have got back to the original line of scrimmage. Nice job of Julian forcing it back in and great run support out of the secondary coming up, making the play. You go uh, take a shot on me here on third and short. (sighs) Yeah, you know, this is four down territory. Or you want to just get the first down and keep moving the chains and run the clock out. With only three and a half minutes to go, you'd like to put something in the end zone right here with about 30 seconds, not give Montevista an opportunity. Go Kabachi with the fullback dive. And they've got, I love a sophomore, and it says full FBLB. We got a fullback linebacker type. The old throwback to the Steve Kelly days before we had to realign him as a tackle and a linebacker. So it'll be first and 10 for the Cougars. And coach, they get the ball to start the second half. So you're looking at a winner's out situation for them. Absolutely. And the clock's on their side right here. They get a first down with three minutes to go. They could milk this all the way down. Ortiz, deep ball, and there is a lot of tackling and holding going on. In coverage was Cody Rhodes, but I got a feeling he's going to be called for the hold or the pass interference. I think they're trying to run a little out and up, a little double move outside. And when he ran the out right there, Cody came up, put his hands on him. You can't do that. That's contact down the field. And uh, whether he runs into you or not, you've got to make sure that you don't impede that, impede his route. So that's the second time tonight the Mustangs have given the Cougars first downs on holds or pass interferences. So now the ball will be spotted just outside the 11-yard line. But the Cougars have come to play here at Monta Vista. Chains haven't been set. Now they have been. Fly sweep. Doherty with another carry. And Coach Macy's going to take his time, try to get as much time drained off this clock as he possibly can. Hey, if they give you 45 seconds, you take 45 seconds. Take 50. 51. You just watch the back judge and wait for him to do the hand. Oh, well, the crowd's. Oh, they're done dancing. All right, we got a little defense chant. Doherty, the young man, 5'9", senior, just dips his head into traffic. Doesn't pick up much, but he'll pick up a couple. It'll make it a third down and about about seven yards, Coach. This is where Monta Vista should be taking a timeout. They've got three left. You can't take them with you. You know, this is a third down coming up. 
if you stop them, you want as much time as possible in order to get uh, it's something on the board. Go in with a great positive uh, you know, vibe first half. If they run the ball here and you don't take a timeout, you're really doing yourself an injustice. Got to manage that clock. And like you said, you, know, you can't go home with the timeouts. Ortiz, and nice job by the Mustang defensive front led by when you're 6'5", and you don't get upfield, get your hands up, Kellen Ford. That's exactly what he did. Or if you're 5'5", five, five, do it. If you can't get up there, you just get your hands up, get in the throwing lane. Bam! You have a short quarterback. Nice play by the junior. Debroyaboff will come on and kick or attempt the field goal. Plenty of leg for this field goal. And this will be a 25-yarder. The kick is up, and it's good, and it's a key three-possession score for the Cougars after the interception. So they take points. They put points up after the turnover, and Campo leads Monta Vista 10-7. You're watching Mustang football on NorCal Sports TV. Persevere Lending, based in Danville, specializes in the brokerage of privately funded real estate loans in California with a focus on the Bay Area. Monta Vista Football Hall of Famer Damon Bauer's team at Persevere Lending can help you achieve your financing goals with their array of alternative and unique mortgage options. Damon has a 20-year track record of success and is ready to go to work for you. Go to PerseveringLending.com to learn about our strategic, creative, and efficient loan programs for residential and commercial properties and our safe, secure, and lucrative investment opportunities. Persevere Lending, we have capital available for you. Dabrolyov with the touchback, and he's quite a weapon. And so the Mustangs will start off on offense on their own 20. I'd like to see Monta Vista come out maybe a little bit of, uh, set some tone with some screens, set some tone, maybe a little draw, a little trap here and there. You can run the ball. Keep running your reach. Uh, your outside zone's a great play. you got three timeouts. The clock's going to stop after every first down. You could milk this and get 10, 12 plays out of a minute 32. You know, I, and another thing I think, that Monta Vista could do is pick the tempo up, and that's something they should talk about in the second half is maybe picking their tempo up, going to a little bit of two-minute offense, and keeping Camp Lindo off balance so they can't make defensive calls. They have to stay into their base. I know two-minute offense is very important to you. I know we, in our last probably 12 seasons coaching, our first offensive series we'd run, the first day of contact would be two-minute offense. Well, that's something that you're going to have almost – every game you know if you're not doing it full on as as, as a hurry up offense you're certainly going to have one at the end of the half or at the end of the game bubble screen out here and it's fumbled by the mustangs and it's recovered by campolindo third turnover third turnover for the mustangs and breedlove has thrown the bubble screen and campolindo reacts brilliantly to this play Turner with the throw, Breedlove with the catch, and the fumble. And I believe that was number three, Tim Doherty, got his hand and stripped the football. So we've had a Mustang interception and two fumbles and a block punt, Coach. Basically four turnovers in the first half. And Ortiz, and this throwing this one up for grabs, and it's caught, and that's embarrassing. Scotty Lyon. Got to play the Little ball in the ball, air better. Great he, ball player. Just watch him just go up and high point this ball. Well, it's a jump ball, and the Monta Vista defensive back doesn't make an effort to go up and get it. He waits for him to catch it and then tackles it. Instead of going up and trying to fight for the ball and get the interception, at least a knockdown, he waits for him to catch it and then tries to tackle him. And I think there was probably a little bit of pass interference before that, a lot of bumping going on that they let happen. So the Mustangs will call timeout. But, you know, this is a Campolindo team that it really hadn't discovered themselves offensively. And not, not by any of our surprise, because we know Kevin and how good of a football coach he is and the type of smart players that they have. Um, they've come out with a great game plan, and they're in a situation 
uh, with a score here um, and then get winners out so they get the ball to start the second half. But the Mustangs really sl- – it's eight turnovers in a game and a half. And they should and be, a block punt. They should feel very fortunate the score is only 10-7 to 7 when you turn the ball four, over four times and don't execute like they have been. To be down only three points looks like it could be more at the end of the half. But that, that, that should be a selling point if you're Coach Millard. It would be a victory here for the defense if they could hold them to a field goal attempt. But I believe – it's complete down to the one-yard line. And again, we've said his name a lot, Tim Doherty. He came into the game with only th- with 13 catches. He's had to have four or five already tonight, and he high points that football. That's a big pet peeve of mine when I see a defensive player backpedal six yards deep into the end zone. They're not going to get behind you. You know, you got to know where you are on the field. F- fly sweep. And I don't think he gets near the goal. It'll be third down, but he's not afraid to get his nose in there and turn up field. Doherty, just a 5'9 senior. And then we've got a timeout, Camp Alindo. I believe they have one left. They have one left. But, you know, time's not a factor no. here. They've... They're a second down, and they should be able to get three plays off if they need to, should they need to. They might run that fly sweep and bounce it outside. That might be a, a call here, or you go with the fullback dive. You know what? I'd probably go fullback dive. Anytime you're going to run outside, you, you take a chance on leakage, somebody getting through, and you're stopping them for a two- or three-yard loss. Then you got big problems with the clock because you're going to have to take your last time out. I uh, told you, if you're going to come on here, you can't correct me anymore. No, I'm just kidding, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably right. McCray in at fullback, foot-to-foot splits. And it's a quarterback sneak, and it's a fumble. But then it ends up into the hands. Not sure who ended up with that. Yeah, quarterback Ortiz got it back. had the ball, but it looked like we've got to take another look at this. It looked like Regardless, it's hands. a touchdown camp Alindo. So he fumbles the snap. Then it's a rugby scrum. And Ortiz with the one-yard plunge. And that is 10 points off turnovers for Campolindo. And 17 unanswered. 16 right now. 17. So 17 points. For Camp Alindo, going into this game, they were averaging 14 points, and they only had one game. They scored over 20, but that was overtime. So Coach Macy made some goals for the week, and certainly his Cougars have come to play. And they are up 17-7 to and can defend here. They can have a 10-point lead going into the locker room, getting the ball. To start the second half. Well, if you're Montevist, you want to obviously secure this kickoff and just take a knee, get out of here, make the corrections you need to make at halftime. You know, most of them are, are mental mistakes, the fumbles, the, the interceptions, things like that, that you just can't, you've got to have more discipline. You've got to hold on to the ball. You can't make those mistakes. And then tackling a little bit more, but the, defensively, I, there's really not a, a lot of complaints if I'm a defensive coach. They've had opportunities to make plays but they've been playing on a short field almost the entire game because of the turnovers. So another touchback for the 5'10 senior kicker, Drabolyabov. And to kick that ball into the end zone nearly every time just sets your defense up for success. Well, how many, how many high school offenses can go 80 yards on a consistent basis without making mistakes? Not, not very many. There's not many NFL or college teams that can do it on a consistent basis. Our old speed fake is perfect when they try and bump you down the field like this. He's from the first half. There's the, fum, the muff kick, and the Mustangs recover. And then Turner scrambles. He finds McMahon, and Jules does the rest. 
He had consecutive touches for over 30 yards. Then he came back and had a big run. Mustangs were all run and then decided to pass and turn the ball over. Ortiz hits Ravelos, the junior, on the touchdown. Ortiz's first career touchdown pass, and then Jungie just takes way too long to kick this ball. We saw this coming. We were not surprised. Yeah, and that's and that's, that's, that's basically a turnover. You give Campolando good field position. The Mustang defense did step up, but then the throw and the in- interception, and then the Cougars got points off of this as well. And Drabolyabov with the kick. So we'll go to halftime. You're watching Monta Vista football as they trail Campolindo 17-7. to We'll be back with the second half after this. You're watching Mustang football on NorCal Sports TV. Monta Vista football on NorCal Sports TV presented by American Asphalt is brought to you in part by Ned Milan at Morgan Stanley. Seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. Spitz Jurors, making memories for over 75 years in Walnut Creek. Persevere Lending, we have capital available for you. Douglas Landscape Construction is a proud supporter of high school athletics. American Asphalt, taking care of business in the Bay Area for over 40 years. Ned Milan has over 19 years of experience in the financial industry, serving individuals, their families, business owners, and corporate executives. Ned proactively helps to develop a comprehensive financial plan in order to provide the appropriate investment strategy for clients. This includes retirement and estate planning, asset management, tax planning, and liability management. Please contact 1998 Monta Vista alum Ned Milan to develop a plan for your family. Ned Milan at Morgan Stanley, seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. Persevere Lending, based in Danville, specializes in the brokerage of privately funded real estate loans in California with a focus on the Bay Area. Monta Vista Football Hall of Famer Damon Bowers' team at Persevere Lending can help you achieve your financing goals with their array of alternative and unique mortgage options. Damon has a 20-year track record of success and is ready to go to work for you. Go to PerseveringLending.com to learn about our strategic, creative, and efficient loan programs for residential and commercial properties and our safe, secure, and lucrative investment opportunities. Persevere Lending, we have capital available for you. Family owned and operated since 1946 as a full service jewelry store, Spitz Jewelers has remained true to our founding philosophies. Founded on the tradition of service, quality, and value, today we proudly continue that tradition from the smallest request to the most intricate custom design. We love what we do, and with three generations of success as our inspiration, we look forward to continuing these traditions into the future. Come see us at 1333 North Main Street in Walnut Creek. Spitz Jewelers making memories for over 75 years. Go Mustangs! Monta Vista football on NorCal Sports TV presented by American Asphalt is brought to you in part by Ned Milan at Morgan Stanley. Seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. Spitz Jurors making memories for over 75 years in Walnut Creek. Persevere Lending, we have capital available for you. Douglas Landscape Construction is a proud supporter of high school athletics. American Asphalt, taking care of business in the Bay Area for over 40 years. 
Ned Milan has over 19 years of experience in the financial industry, serving individuals, their families, business owners, and corporate executives. Ned proactively helps to develop a comprehensive financial plan in order to provide the appropriate investment strategy for clients. This includes retirement and estate planning, asset management, tax planning, and liability management. Please contact 1998 Monta Vista alum Ned Milan to develop a plan for your family. Ned Milan at Morgan Stanley, seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. Persevere Lending, based in Danville, specializes in the brokerage of privately funded real estate loans in California with a focus on the Bay Area. Monta Vista Football Hall of Famer Damon Bauer's team at Persevere Lending can help you achieve your financing goals with their array of alternative and unique mortgage options. Damon has a 20-year track record of success and is ready to go to work for you. Go to PerseveringLending.com to learn about our strategic, creative, and efficient loan programs for residential and commercial properties and our safe, secure, and lucrative investment opportunities. Persevere Lending, we have capital available for you. Family owned and operated since 1946 as a full service jewelry store, Spitz Jewelers has remained true to our founding philosophies. Founded on the tradition of service, quality, and value, today we proudly continue that tradition from the smallest request to the most intricate custom design. We love what we do, and with three generations of success as our inspiration, we look forward to continuing these traditions into the future. Come see us at 1333 North Main Street in Walnut Creek. Spitz Jewelers making memories for over 75 years. Go Mustangs! Monta Vista Football on NorCal Sports TV, presented by American Asphalt, is brought to you in part by Ned Milan at Morgan Stanley, seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. Spitz Jewelers, making memories for over 75 years in Walnut Creek. Persevere Lending, we have capital available for you. Douglas Landscape Construction is a proud supporter of high school athletics. American Asphalt, taking care of business in the Bay Area for over 40 years. Ned Milan has over 19 years of experience in the financial industry, serving individuals, their families, business owners, and corporate executives. Ned proactively helps to develop a comprehensive financial plan in order to provide the appropriate investment strategy for clients. This includes retirement and estate planning, asset management, tax planning, and liability management. Please contact 1998 Monta Vista alum Ned Milan to develop a plan for your family. Ned Milan at Morgan Stanley, seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. Persevere Lending, based in Danville, specializes in the brokerage of privately funded real estate loans in California with a focus on the Bay Area. Monta Vista Football Hall of Famer Damon Bauer's team at Persevere Lending can help you achieve your financing goals with their array of alternative and unique mortgage options. Damon has a 20-year track record of success and is ready to go to work for you. Go to PerseveringLending.com to learn about our strategic, creative, and efficient loan programs for residential and commercial properties and our safe, secure, and lucrative investment opportunities. Persevere Lending, we have capital available for you. Family owned and operated since 1946 as a full-service jewelry store, Spitz Jewelers has remained true to our founding philosophies. 
Founded on the tradition of service, quality, and value, today we proudly continue that tradition from the smallest request to the most intricate custom design. We love what we do, and with three generations of success as our inspiration, we look forward to continuing these traditions into the future. Come see us at 1333 North Main Street in Walnut Creek. Spitz Jewelers making memories for over 75 years. Go Mustangs! Monta Vista Football on NorCal Sports TV, presented by American Asphalt, is brought to you in part by Ned Milan at Morgan Stanley, seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. Spitz Jewelers, making memories for over 75 years in Walnut Creek. Persevere Lending, we have capital available for you. Douglas Landscape Construction is a proud supporter of high school athletics. American Asphalt, taking care of business in the Bay Area for over 40 years. Ned Milan has over 19 years of experience in the financial industry, serving individuals, their families, business owners, and corporate executives. Ned proactively helps to develop a comprehensive financial plan in order to provide the appropriate investment strategy for clients. This includes retirement and estate planning, asset management, tax planning, and liability management. Please contact 1998 Monta Vista alum Ned Milan to develop a plan for your family. Ned Milan at Morgan Stanley, seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. Persevere Lending, based in Danville, specializes in the brokerage of privately funded real estate loans in California. With a So Campolindo scored 17 straight points. Mustangs got off to the early 7-zip lead, and then the Cougars have bounced back and then some. Four Monta Vista turnovers tonight equals what they did last week against Amador Valley. Uh, Julian McMahon has 92 yards rushing and also a 48-yard touchdown reception. And I would expect Coach Winger, the offensive coordinator of the Mustangs, and Coach Millard, the Mustangs head coach, to come out and establish the run the next time they get the football. But Campolindo will receive the opening kick. And once again, want to we appreciate all of our partners. Ned, Ned Milan at Morgan Stanley. Spitz Jewelers. Persevere Lending. And my employer for 20 seasons, American Asphalt. So coming into the game, the turnover ratio for Campolindo was plus two. Well, they've created four turnovers tonight, so now that is plus six. For the Mustangs, their turnover ratio was minus two coming into the game with four turnovers now that it's minus six. So they, you know, the three keys to victory first for Kevin Macy. We have to score 20 more 20 or more points, well, they're right there, and they're above their average. Hold the opponent to less than 20 points. They're right on that. And then time of possession. The defense has spent a lot of time on the field in the first three games, and it feels like six. Well, they're probably 
pretty close to owning that as well. For Coach Millard and the three keys for Monta Vista, smart with the football, win the turnover battle. They're not tonight. Win at the line of scrimmage, they are, but they need to continue to run the football and explosive plays on O and D. No explosive plays on defense, but certainly Julie McMahon has had a couple of nice runs and then a long touchdown run. Campolindo will get the opening kick. Our next Monta Vista football game here on NorCal Sports TV will be against California High School, and imagine there'll be a post-game barbecue coach with uh, Ned Milan and company. That'll be October 13th. The next game for the Mustangs, they'll play at Foothill on October 6th. They'll have a bye next week. So Jungie will come on to kick. And despite four turnovers and everything, the Mustangs only trail by 10 and got a, the whole game in front of them. Yeah, they've got the whole game. And you talk no explosive plays on defense. They've had the opportunity to make those explosive plays. The ball's been up in the air. They've got to go get it. they got to attack the football as if they're on offense. Make those explosive plays. So if they're going to get back in this game, they've got to make a few plays defensively, continue to run the ball, like you said, and not turn the ball over. So eight turnovers in two weeks for Monta Vista, and actually that's just in a game and a half. But they could leave and get that all behind them with a clean half of football. And Jungie with a kick taken by Lyon. And he'll return it to the 20, the 30. We got a penalty, and this one will come back. So it'll be 10 yards where that flag is thrown. A little laundry on the field is at the 26. I imagine this will go back to the 16-yard line. Never ceases to amaze me at any level there seems to be a block in the back on almost every kickoff. So Campo looked like they were going to start with decent field position, but after the penalty, it'll be marched back. And Campo will spot it up at their own 17-yard line. Ortiz has done a good job of sharing the football to Revelos, Doherty, and Lyon. And then Sugiyama's made a couple of nice explosive runs for Campo. Ortiz back to pass. Steps into that throw, coach, and he's got a receiver. And he turned and faced the football. And if we get a good shot, and I think we do, why is that important versus getting and face guarding without facing to the football? Well, when you, you make a play on the ball, you're more than likely not going to get a pass interference because you're playing the ball. And you see right at the end, he turns back, goes up through the hands. Receiver does stop, and he makes a little contact, but that's a good no call by the official. So Cody Rhodes, at 12 tackles coming into the game, makes the play, and then we've got a sleepy receiver, and then – Leaves the field, comes back onto the field, and Coach Macy will call timeout. We'll take one as well. You're watching Monta Vista Football on NorCal Sports TV. I almost went. Monta Vista Football on NorCal Sports TV, presented by American Asphalt, is brought to you in part by Ned Milan and Morgan Stanley, seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. Spitz Jewelers, making memories for over 75 years in Walnut Creek. Persevere Lending, we have capital available for you. And American Asphalt, taking care of business in the Bay Area for over 40 years. Monta Vista Football on NorCal Sports TV, presented by American Asphalt, is brought to you in part by Ned Milan and Morgan Stanley. For the Cougars. Out of Moraga, California. Ortiz stays in the pocket, throw out in the flat, wide open receiver. And it's going to be a 16-yard gain. And Revelos with another catch. That's his third of the game. And has one of those is a touchdown reception. So, Coach, you had Campolindo backed up near inside the uh, – just out inside the 20-yard line. 
And yada, yada, yada. Now they've got the ball out. A little, little bit of a blown coverage line. right there. The flat defender, who I believe was Mateo Congdon, got to get out there quicker. You know, he was way too late getting out there. Toss, and then the Mustangs. Just no force player whatsoever, and it's an easy six-yard gain. And Along then I the believe the Mustangs are called for an unsportsmanlike conduct. They may pick this up. No, they're not going. No, you're going to get called for the meat locker tackle after the whistle is blown. So the Mustangs give up a six-yard run and then commit the unsportsmanlike conduct. You can't bring the guy down to the ground after the whistle is blown. And, if and you you'll pick see him what up happens. Slam him down there. Right here. Just about every time. Right there. We call that the meat locker tackle because I used to work in a butcher shop and the guy would bring in the side of the beef and he would slam it down on the table. And that's going to be a penalty. Back in our coaching days, those were, you know, we'd, we'd applaud them. But now when it's such a safety factor with officials... So Campo's gone to this a number of times, Coach. Empty formation. Ortiz under center. No pressure at all. And he's got a wide open receiver and a blown coverage. And it'll be a touchdown for Campo Lindo. Wide open. Tim Doherty. 45 yards. And talk about blown coverage. There is nobody within 15 yards. Great route. A nice route, but you got to stay over the top of that route. You can't, you know, you have no help to your inside. You got to stay over the top of it, play inside leverage, don't overrun it. Because if he crosses your face, that's exactly what's going to happen. It was like an in and up, and he is just absolutely wide open. So the goal is met just into the first drive of the second half, and Campolindo, 24 straight, and lead the Mustangs. 24-7. You're watching Monta Vista Football on NorCal Sports TV. Ned Milan has over 19 years of experience in the financial industry, serving individuals, their families, business owners, and corporate executives. Ned proactively helps to develop a comprehensive financial plan in order to provide the appropriate investment strategy for clients. This includes retirement and estate planning, asset management, tax planning, and liability management. Please contact 1998 Monta Vista alum Ned Milan to develop a plan for your family. Ned Milan at Morgan Stanley, seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. Here's the last play. It's 45 yards and a great route. And he, I know... You know, you know what I'm going to say, Coach, but that's a Linda Rodstead blue by you coverage, and it's an well, easy score you know, for the Mustangs. Defensively, there's two trains of thought when you have a team that's running empty. Either you put a lot of heat on that quarterback and you bring six to try and not let him set his feet, or you drop a lot of guys into coverage. And we're kind of in between right now. Monta Vista rushed four guys, very, you know, not really enough to put pressure on, but yet they dropped only seven, so there's a lot of holes in that defense, so... I think they're going to have, have to make a decision. Are we going to drop or are we going to start bringing heat on that empty set? So an 83-yard drive for Campo to open the second half. And there's instant offense. McMahon picks up 12. And I'd like to see a no huddle and still you could still run the football. Absolutely. Run your entire offense. Pick up the tempo. I, I see a lot of two-way guys out there for Campo. That's going to tire them out. You know, the, the, those two-way guys, the corners, their they're linemen, their linebackers, all those guys are going both ways. I see a lot of the same numbers out there. So pick up your tempo, you know, try and gas them a little bit, slow them down on offense as well. McMahon's over 100 yards for the game. First play offense from, uh, from on offense for the Mustangs. And it's reach weak, and McMahon cuts it back, spins, and gets another six yards. Until they commit everybody to the line of scrimmage, you can just continue to pound the football here. You know, he's got over 100 yards rushing basically in one half. And, yep. and they've got to take advantage of that and just keep moving the ball and wear them down. Second and four. It, it's never too late to get back into a game with the offense that Montevis is running. They can score very quickly. Reach week again. 
And a good defense that time by Campolindo in particular, using that sideline as a 12th defender. I'd like to see Montevista run back to the trip side here. Uh, you know, I, you talk about defensive linemen's alignment. They're starting to widen to that weak side, widen to the boundary, and Montevista continues trying to run the ball there. I'd love to see them extend it and run it to the strong side because break those tendencies. Third and a long three for the Mustangs. Three by one set. Ford in the slot. Breedlove in route, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Luke Clausen. You know, had, there's two things wrong here. Luke's got to push that. But he's got to push that right up one extra step to get the first down. Because even if he catches it right there, he's going to be a yard short of the first down. Got to get beyond the chains if you're going to catch it. And then you got to catch first and run second, like we talked about before. So the Mustangs don't answer, and the Campo defense with the stop. And you've got dual returners. And let's but, see if he picked up his tempo. Bernardi and Doherty back. End over end kick. That's a 31-yard kick for Jungi and Campolindo. Who is red hot offensively? They came into this game averaging 14 points a game, and they've got 24 on the board. Big drive here for both sides. You know, Campo, if they put a sustained drive and put points on the board, that's really a dagger to Montavista. Montavista's got to try and force a three and out, get their offense back there as quickly as possible. Counter. And pick up a five. But, Coach, I see I see the safeties creeping up. See the safeties creeping up and getting their head in the backfield. They've got to trust that the guys up front can defend. And they pick up. Ed Campo has been fantastic on first down tonight. Yeah, and they're, they're doing exactly what you want to as an offense, putting themselves in second and short, second and medium. Offset eye. For Coach Macy, and then reset to the weak side. Inside run, and the Mustangs do a great job. And Congdon, the safety, has got his nose in there, which is great. But I guarantee you, the Campo coaching staff is going to see this. Boy, show that again. Really nice. Watch job number with his two hands. just. Shiver me timber on the leading block, lead blocker here. Watch number two come into your screen. And he comes up and he does a nice job with his hands. A stone in that Fire, fullback yeah, right yeah, there, yeah. right through him to the running back. Very well done for Congdon. That's the type of play the Mustangs need to do more of. Third and four. And they big need play. to get off the field here. Bootleg. Wide open. First down and more. I love the play call. <laughs> love the play call. Nice play call. You know, the, you'd like to see uh, the defensive end down here stay home so that when he does boot, he comes right back He's in. He's trying here. to make a play. He's trying to make a play instead of doing his job, and then that's a result. It's a chain moving play for Campolindo. And I'm sure there's a reason for that because they saw that on film. Our guys are trying to get up the field, and they're vacating the edge. Campo driving again. You got to stay disciplined. You know, football's a game of discipline. You hear it all the time on Sundays, on Saturdays, every 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 game possible. Discipline is right there, doing your job, not somebody else's. Ortiz has time, steps up. It's going to be a hold, but it might be a Mustang interception. No, it's a catch. It'll come back. But talking about winning the 50-50 ball. Scotty Lynn, watch him go up and get this football. It's coming back, but you got to love him. It's the out and up coach, the chair route. Look him go up and get this ball. Brilliant. That's just a, one kid wanting the ball more than the other and going up and getting it. And that's, a, that's something you have to practice. You can't just expect to go out there and do it in a game. You've got to work on those high balls. 
going up and getting it, making it, you know, making it a competition in practice. Whoever comes down with it, you know, doing it for having some some sort of reward. Whoever does, make them fight for it. So there's a hold on Campo after the brilliant win. So a game of discipline and a game of one-on-one matchups, and you've got to make those plays in those one-on-one matchups. And so far tonight, Campolindo's made those plays. <laughs> Scott Lyon reminds me of a, a receiver, one of the best we ever had, and had a great career at UC Davis is Tommy Hemmingson. Watch two come back for this football. And watch the amount of his to wait for it. he got to go attack it. Attack that ball. This is the time to go out and attack it. And you see that because that's not the first time they've run that route tonight, right? So you make a mistake, you make two, but then you, you make adjustments. You, and it can't always be the coaches adjusting. You've so you got to make the play. you got to be like a grizzly going after a, a pack of berries right there. Wow, that's interesting. I would say more like you on a post-game barbecue going <laughs> There's off to my ribs. Opportunity get ball on the ground, and Ortiz does well enough to just take the seven-yard loss. I believe this is only their second loss, a uh, negative play of the night. Kelly with the yo-yo motion, and Ortiz, ball was on the ground, and the Mustangs couldn't come up with recovery. So, one word, screen. Screen or just straight run. They may run counter right here. You know, you've got a 24 to well, 7. Well, they watched lead. a film last week against Amador and how many times the Dons hit the Mustangs with the middle screen. And of course, that fourth was fourth and 12. This one's, you know, third well, and 27. Third and, then, and, 27. and then again, you might want to just throw it up and let your kid go get it. He's, he's out battled our corner every night. Monavista's corner. And he's got, got one on. You it. know, he's not going to get safety help, especially if you can occupy him. With Doherty up on a, a vertical route, and then it's a delay of the Danny, delay a game for the Cougars, I really, and they'll march back five I, yards. I wouldn't be shocked if they go right back at Cody Rhodes and throw it up to the receiver, who is very aggressive going to get it. I think this is uh, it's an opportunity for, for Cody, if he gets that opportunity, to, to get up and get it, because you know it's going to be there. So the clock should wind again. But... Oh, he almost swung his arm. Ortiz, he's going to do just that. But Ford, with the hurry, and it's going to be a completed pass to Micah Parker. One of the strangest completions I've ever seen. A sophomore with his, this looked to be his first action of the game. He had 207 yards coming into the game. And I like how here in the center bleachers we arrange for our 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 students and to sit down and then they're all gone. We got to get Shahada to move up. Uh, the punter is not punted it this deep once this this week and that's what happens again. It, it's going to land in front of you and we get the bounce. Montevista gets the bounce this time but not we're we're way too deep. So 32, you got a 20-yard punt. The Mustangs need to take advantage, so they stop the onslaught of scoring by the Cougars, and the Mustangs will take the ball with 5:07 left in the third quarter. I'm Chris Babcock, joined by my broadcast partner Craig Bergman, and the Mustangs will get right up onto the football in Breedlove in the shotgun, and they'll run a little inside run, and McMahon picks up about four, get right up back up on the football. Yeah, you know, this is a scenario where Monovitz is going to have to pick up their tempo. You can't go at this pace and expect to come back because, you know, Campo's going to, they're going to kill the clock as much as they can. It's going to be a quick game. Yep. So Campo leads in the all-time series 5-2. to two. Breedlove steps up, throw, and it's intercepted. Bernardi, the 45, and he's tackled. But the fifth turnover by Monta Vista, that's nine in two games. And it's, it's hard to stay competitive in football when you are turning it over. And Campo 
with another pick. You know, and that's just uh, forcing the ball down the field with that right there. And uh, They're taking away the deep stuff. It's pretty obvious that, that Campbell came in saying, you know what, we're going to give you this underneath stuff. We're going to not let you beat us deep with the quick one. They've seen Monta Vista th- score very quickly in every game this year. So they're doing a nice job with their safeties of staying deep and not getting beat by the quick one and making Monta Vista go the length of the field. And obviously they've been making mistakes. We talked about how it's so hard to go 80 yards without making a mistake. It's been hard for Monta Vista to go 50 yards without making a mistake tonight. So Bernardi with the pick. And then the Cougars are called for the unsportsmanlike conduct. And they'll snap this football at their own 27. But they have scored 24 straight points on the Mustangs. Parker, late arrival, and I imagine he'll get a few carries on this drive. Inside run, picks up four or five yards. And if we went back on the play chart of this game on first down, Campolindo's been 90% of the time positive yardage of four or more on first down. And, you know, and first contact's not being made till four or five yards down the field. So that tells me that uh, the defensive line's not doing a great job of maintaining gap control because if they're getting through untouched like that to the linebackers, uh, we're losing a lot of gap control in there. So it'll be second down and five. Bubble screen. And running through arm tackles. He's a good football player. I've said his name several times tonight. Tim Doherty. And, Coach, he's just running through arm tackles on the bubble screen. Yeah, not good angles, One. not breaking down in space out of Monta Vista. They've got to do a better job of coming to balance out there. I mean, it was well-executed play, well-blocked play, but it shouldn't have gone for as many yards as it did. It should have been about a six- or seven-yard game. And we know, Kevin, he's not going to sit on the football. They're going to run their offense. And he talked about this week of having getting established some, some balance, and they are st- most certainly establishing their passing game. Is that a fumble? And then a helmet comes off, and usually a helmet comes off because somebody grabs it in the face mask. Go, we'll see what I believe it's going to be a face mask on Monta Vista. It is. Do you see Casey Donovan? I, Casey looking good as usual. Yep. What a lovely family. <laughs> he is good. Him and his brother are great football players. And his mom and dad are just terrific people. Yep. I believe he's still one assistant public defender for Contra Costa County. He is. He's a and his lot, wife is the district attorney. And he's a lot smarter than we are. And we'll die, and we will move on. Twenty nine reach and Talon Jones is all over that. I like Talon's frustrated. I get it. He just wrapped up and he didn't go with the extracurricular of throwing the his opponent down to the ground, and it's a TFL for him and. Jones defensively is the Mustangs leading tackler by far. And coming into the game, 31 tackles, six TFLs, give him seven. It's second and ten. The Mustangs need to stop and to get the and create a turnover. And Talon Jones is just a, a darn good football player. He's all over the field. He does everything right. Flat route. And they'll give him the catch. Looked like it could have been a trap. Obviously, no replay. Scotty Lyon has got his selling shoes on, and he just acted like he'd been there before. And this is just all hitches. Yeah, it looked like there was a little bounce in there, but he did a nice job of coming up and showing it, which is what you tell all the receivers to do. Sell it. Sell it. If we called our receivers and said, what was the thing you – it's sell it. You got to act like you got it. A little confusion, and Kelly As, will stay in. And you know what? It's like George Costanza said. If Go ahead, Coach. It's not a lie if you believe it. <laughs> Third and six, bubble screen out here. That's, that could be a fumble. Jump on it. That ball was backwards. It's bothersome. No whistle. So when in doubt, when in doubt, go and grab that football. I don't know if he's watching in Kansas tonight, but Mont Rusty sees a football on the ground at Freedom. 
and he grabs it, he picks it up, and he walks into the end zone. We all knew it was a bad call for the official, but we got the seven points. Well, it's he, a bad call for freedom, if, not a bad call for us. If it happened now, he could hide it in that god-awful beard he yeah, got. Yeah, so if you got a ball on the ground, it doesn't hurt to pick it up and run the other way. They'll just blow it down. Fourth down, big play here for the Monta Vista defense. Ortiz, sideline, complete, first down. Too much cushion. You guys, it's a fourth, fourth and eight, and you, you get play a the chains. 15 yard cushion. Revelos again, and he came in the game with six receptions. I think he's near that, all, doubling that already tonight. And again, this is a Campolindo team that has struggled offensively, but coming off the bye, I knew that Coach Macy would put together a game plan, and he certainly has. And then they'll go with the, the I formation. Antonio McCray as the fullback, and he'll lead up in the hole, and not much there. And the tackle made by Dumphy, the sophomore. And Coach Macy's going to take his time. He's not going to purposely drain the clock, but he's not going to be in a hurry. Get those calls from the sideline. They'll run him out here. And after that play, the initial play is ruled down. You've got 40 seconds. And you normally get 45 because they won't, you know, manage that time tightly. Downhill run. And Doherty came into the game with 12 carries and, and, and also 13 receptions. And he has been all over the football field as well as Lyon and Revelos. The triple threat receivers for Campolindo. Just got a text from Coach Russie. He's not too happy with my beard comment. Tell him to send his emails to Rebecca Smith. And no I longer will also boss. say I truly do miss having Coach Russie out here. Terrific person. Flat great route, coach, complete great touchdown. Jake Spencer getting into the action. Came into the game with seven receptions. Make it eight. And it's a touchdown, and it's 30 straight points for the Cougars. I don't know if the Mustangs came into this game thinking that they were they were overlooking this Campolindo team, but this is a program led by Kevin Macy, 28 seasons at Campo, believe six NCS titles, two CIF titles, and the thing that I knew they would come out and play well Coming off the bye. It's been all Campolindo. They lead 31-7. You're watching Monta Vista Football on NorCal Sports TV. Family owned and operated since 1946 as a full-service jewelry store, Spitz Jewelers has remained true to our founding philosophies. Founded on the tradition of service, quality, and value, today we proudly continue that tradition from the smallest request to the most intricate custom design. We love what we do, and with three generations of success as our inspiration, we look forward to continuing these traditions into the future. Come see us at 1333 North Main Street in Walnut Creek. Spitz Jewelers making memories for over 75 years. Go Mustangs! And that's another touchback. So the Monta Vista Mustangs, you've said it, you've said it consistently. It's hard for a team to go, a high school team, professional team, college team, to go 80 yards consistently. When he's kicking off, the ball goes into the end zone. The Mustangs get the ball at the 20. So they might not be able to come back and win this game, but they certainly need to establish some kind of identity on offense. You know they've got to get some positives here. They've got to be able to go into next week's next week's buy feeling a little bit more confident about about what they're doing. You, know, you talk about the the end zone kickoffs. We were fortunate enough to have a lot of great kickers. One of which Peyton Henry, I believe, is the all time University of Washington scorer. Yep. And we had that that uh, oh boy. We that was such a pleasure to have him kicking because every time he kicked it, we knew it'd be in the end zone. I was so tempted multiple times. And I know it wouldn't be a very good move. It'd be a bad coaching move to send him out as a kicker, just him, no, no coverage team. Because I the knew, wa- he, the wa- I knew he'd kick the walk off kicker. Breedlove in route catch, 
Turner with the throw. Breedlove with the catch. Mustangs move the chains. Nice job by Braden stepping up in the pocket, delivering. It's the same route that he threw an interception on before at the end of the half. Uh, and this time he stepped up, delivered a nice throw. We'll go to the fourth quarter. Campolindo has run off 31 straight points against the Mustangs. They lead 31 to 7. Come back for the final chapter here on NorCal Sports TV. Persevere Lending, based in Danville, specializes in the brokerage of privately funded real estate loans in California with a focus on the Bay Area. Monta Vista Football Hall of Famer Damon Bowers' team at Persevere Lending can help you achieve your financing goals with their array of alternative and unique mortgage options. Damon has a 20-year track record of success and is ready to go to work for you. Go to PerseverLending.com to learn about our strategic, creative, and efficient loan programs for residential and commercial properties and our safe, secure, and lucrative investment opportunities. Persevere Lending, we have capital available for you. Monta Vista football to start the fourth quarter. Chris Babcock joined by my broadcast partner, Craig Bergman, Campolino's runoff. 31 straight points. Turner, throw, forward, incomplete. It's a nice job by Brayden. I really like to see Monta Vista pick the tempo up here. Go to a hurry-up offense because this is something, this is a great opportunity to practice. If you, know, if you think you can get back in the game, that's the only way you can do it. And if you can't, it's still great practice because you're going to need it down the road. Second and ten, clock stop on the incompletion. Reach to the three receiver side. McMahon running through arm tackles. And he gains seven. Get right back up on the football. Give him nine. It'll be third and one. Get up on the ball and go, go, go. Right here, I just sneak it, get the first down, move it on from there, and then go. Got to know the down and distance. Slant route thrown into a crowd, and Chahada not able to come up with it. Not sure if that was an RPO or not, a run pass option. We got You got to know the down and distance there. First and ten, I mean, third and one, get the first down. Don't put yourself in a situation where you have to make a fourth and one. You know, get, get yeah, the ball to your big back be, who just got nine yards on a running I think that line. was going to be all pass. I mean, having that big guy in the backfield is like a pass anyway. Give it to him. Let him get seven or eight yards. Fourth and short. Mustangs need to convert. And I don't think they do. That's why third down, you know, you want to get that. You want to get it as quick as you can. Don't put yourself where you have to get it on fourth down. So watch the white jerseys end up on the black jersey side of the football. There's three, four, five, six jerseys there nearly unblocked. And Campolindo. All three keys. Check, check, check for Coach Macy. And I appreciate his help and... And preparing for this game this week. The Cougars coming off the bye. And they are going to be very excited about this performance. And going into league against Benicia. I Parker, believe, the sophomore. If you look at that formation, I believe that was an illegal formation. I thought I saw five guys in the backfield. Yeah, and you do. You've got the three backs. The receiver still, he's off the ball up there. But they did have double tight ends with 10 and 8 on the left side. Uh, the officials doing a good job here tonight. And a, a night of five turnovers for Monta Vista. Four last week. So for the season, they're negative 7 on the turnover ratio. Campo is plus 7. Parker and Talon Jones with the tackle. No gain. I think you're going to see a steady dose of those plays here. And, and Campo would gladly punt it away and force Monta Vista to drive the length of the field again. 
I would imagine it's some type of play to the wide side of the field, maybe the bubble screen. And they've been very successful with the, uh, the, the hitch routes. Third and six. Play action pass, tied in the flat, and he'll work his trying to get the first down. He doesn't, and a player not afraid to get his nose in it is Cody Rhodes. And I thought Kelly might get the first down wide open. And good job by Rhodes with the tackle. So it'll be fourth down. And the Cougars are going to go for it here. Last time they ran a sneak, the, they scored on it, but the ball was fumbled. So, And the way he staggered with his stance, I think he's going to get it again. Fullback dive, and they'll convert the first down. Sebastian Otonios McRae moves the chains for the Cougars. First down at the Mustang 45-yard line. They'll stick with the, the fullback set. Parker breaks along the edge, and he's going to score. 45 yards, Micah Parker. Second touchdown of the season for him. 26, the sophomore, came up from the JVs. He's had 100-yard game. He had 207 yards, and he, Coach, I don't think he was even touched. Boy, he was shot out of a cannon when he turned that corner. 37 on the way to 38 straight points here for Campolindo, and that kick is good. You're watching Monta Vista Football on NorCal Sports TV. Monta Vista Football on NorCal Sports TV, presented by American Asphalt, is brought to you in part by Ned Milan and Morgan Stanley, seeking to help you simplify your financial life by maximizing your potential for meeting life goals. Spitz Jewelers, making memories for over 75 years in Walnut Creek. Persevere Lending, we have capital available for you. And American Asphalt, taking care of business in the Bay Area for over 40 years. He's been a busy man. He's got five extra points. Derbolyubov will try to get another touchback. I believe this will be... Oh, he's going to a little pooch kick. Taken by Lasker. And he turns it out to the 30. Gets it to the 40-yard line. Actually, that's Christian Bruner. With the return coming all the way across the field. Brunner actually the return man. and does a nice job, Coach, getting out here to the 40-yard line. And normally you don't and a lot of substitutions here for the Cougars. Great job getting it. It's obviously they had a return left on. And when the ball's kicked that far away, a lot of the times you tell your returner just get straight up the field because you're never going to get to the outside where, where, where you want to get to. Abort the return. Turner. Catch. Breedlove. 40. Down. Tackled to the 33-yard line. Clock will stop. And actually be spotted at the 30. The Mustangs will get right back up onto the football. Carson Mix at... At uh, running back in place of McMahon. Turner steps up in the pocket. It's a throw a long way across the field. Caught by Ford, and he goes out of bounds. Boy, if you look at that, this is an opportunity right here where Brain's got to use his feet. He steps up in the pocket. If you look at the middle Good of the field, here, he might run for a touchdown. There's nobody there. The middle of the field is wide open. He's got 20 yards in front of him. Get up the field and go. Be a threat. And right there, you be a threat running, it's going to open up more things for and you. And that's a high-risk pass because you're throwing it from your left hash mark 
to outside the television numbers in front of your opponent's bench. Second down and two. Turner, RPO, Ford, catch. And he gets inside the 10 to be marked at the six-yard line. I mean, this is – Campo had the muff punt. That's it. Very little penalties tonight, and they've played a, a near – Perfect football game against the Mustangs. And I, and you, you mentioned it once before. I think they've only had one or two negative plays. I can't remember them playing behind the chains. Two. Two negative plays. Two negative plays. And their first down um, success has been consistently gaining four to six yards. And you know better than me. When you're able to pick up that type of yardage, it also builds the confidence of your offense to throw – you know, Ortiz has had a career night. He's thrown the bubble screen, the corner route, the stay route, the hitches, 50-50 uh, ball, having confidence in his teammates like uh, Lyon or Doherty to go up and win the 50-50 battle. Well, and the first down calls have been, you know, kind of like what, what we preach for all those years about get positive yards. Get your quarterback involved in the game early. Get him high percentage throws. Put yourself in second and short. And the way you do that are quick throws, running the football, some boots nakeds, not being able to, not being afraid to to run your quarterback a little bit, not taking so many shots down the field on first down, and 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 taking your shots on those downs that you need to. Giordani, the Giordani brothers team up on coverage. There, they know Ford's going to get the fade route. Wasn't a surprise party to them, and credit the coaching staff of having these Cougars well prepared. Turner. And he runs, picks up a yard or two, and he's wrapped up. Colin Spencer with the play. You got Jake Spencer, Colin Spencer, Landy Giordani, James Giordani. It's a family affair here for Campolindo. So it'll be fourth down after the incompletion. You know, and that, they've been putting some heat on him. I haven't seen a lot of things that, that have, I haven't seen one trap in the past couple of weeks. I haven't seen enough draw. I haven't seen enough screens to try and slow that rush down a little bit, give him a little bit more time because the defensive line right now, they, they're just teeing off. They know that they're going to throw the ball. Uh, this is a great opportunity to run, not necessarily on this down, but in this, this drive it was. Fourth and goal from the five. Turner to Ford, touchdown, Monta Vista, and they snap 38 straight, scored by Campolindo. And on to kick the extra point is Jungi. Make it 38 to 13. And as we mentioned, they've struggled with the points after touchdown. It's the holder, the snapper, the guys up front. They've got to work together, work together in unison and convert on these PATs. And the kick is up, and it's good. And the Mustangs put some points on the board. They haven't scored since their first possession with 5.33 left in the first quarter. So our next Monta Vista football game on NorCal Sports TV will be Friday October 13th as the California High School Grizzlies where all Coach Bergman's kids graduated from and where all of Ned Milan's kids are going to graduate from. And Gr Brad Ned Cooks. Coach over there, a Monta Vista alum, supports with his advertising. Imagine a post-game barbecue would instill there as well. Coach Jones. Coach Jones. We've got... And Jungie's going to line up for the onside kick. I do the behind the foot and kick it over here to the fit, the other I in front of the Monta Vista I, I, I bench. I worked a little pooch over the second level, try to. Uh... And Campolindo goes and gets the football. Reed Norton, and it's hands alert for Coach Macy. 
And and I like here with Norton. He didn't let this take another hop. He went, went goes and gets the football, secures it, and it's Campo football. Senior quarterback or junior quarterback Mark Robeson into the game for Camp Alindo. 16 of 49 on the season, 151 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Was 8 of 24 for 68 yards against Amador. And then there's some new players on offense for Camp Alindo because tonight they haven't had, they've had maybe a couple of penalties on them with their starters in there. A little miscommunication, new quarterback, a couple different linemen in. And it's a new voice. New voice, new snap count. Parker, who had the big touchdown run of 45 yards. But the Mustangs have just given up a lot of big plays tonight for scores, as they did last week against Amador. Start to few, see so when few, you give uh, up those big plays on defense, and you talked about high school teams struggling to go the length of the field, when they're scoring on those big plays, you're not, you're not creating turnovers. You're not, and that's the thing. Is as a defense, I think, you know, you can give up some plays. Not necessarily the big plays are what kills you. Make them, force them to go eighty yards without making a mistake. Because sooner or later, somebody's going to break down. You're going to get a turnover. You're going to get a penalty. Uh, you're just going to get a miscue. You're going to get a sack, and then it's and you're going to fall behind the chains. You're going to end up punting it. Make I, them go the whole way. I, I like how the sophomore running back Parker and I and we call this four minute offense. I know there's five minutes left in this plus left in this game, but he ran into the hole. He's had both hands protecting the football, and then Coach Macy calls a timeout not to run up the score, is <laughs> to get the correct play in and the correct substitution in and get things organized. If you like watching sports on NorCal Sports TV, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you're watching this game tonight. It's very simple. YouTube.com slash NorCal Sports TV. You'll get alerts of upcoming games. Tomorrow we'll be, we've got two JC games. I'll be up at Butte College for the Butte Roadrunners taking on Modesto Junior College. And then we've got Chabot hosting Santa Rosa Junior College um, as well. You'll get alerts about those upcoming games. Follow us on social media at NorCal Sports TV. We're not going to sell you, uh, try to sell you a car warranty of a vehicle that you sold 30 years ago. We just need subscribers. So empty backfield here on 3rd and 11. And it's an X-Fast screen. And the Mustangs defend it very well. And Scott Lyon, who's had a big game tonight, and the Mustangs make the play, and Dabrolyabov will come on and punt. And he has really, really set up their defense by, after scores, kicking the ball, except twice, through the end zone for touchbacks. Yeah, and one of them was the designed squib, squib right. kick. So. It wasn't by Mas- It was all... A Hitchcock movie. It was all scripted. There was a reason they did it. So the clock running here. And once again, we're lining up way too deep. He hasn't punted it that far. The ball most likely is going to hit in front of him. And they lose more yardage. So those are some things that can be need to be corrected because you're giving up yardage and the Mustangs who started the season 3-0 and and about to fall to 3-2. and They came into this game averaging over 40 points a game. And credit Camp Alindo. And, and Coach Macy was looking for their defense to step up, and they've done just that. And, and, and you know, it's the offense is all about execution, and, and they've been turning the ball over. When you turn the ball over, obviously you're not executing what you want, and uh, and that's that's where the points come from. And you lose you lose five possessions with five turnovers, and uh, and that's what's going to happen. You, you know? got and you got to be near, you have to be perfect at that point. 
But if you have an offense that's getting points off, now early on they weren't getting points off those turnovers, but the last four they got points off, and thus the 24-point differential. You know, and, and when Coach Millard sits and watches this, I'm sure he'll see that, and that's one of the things you've got to grind to these kids is that, guys, we're beating ourselves. You know, and offensively, we're moving the ball, and then we turn it over. There's a lot of room to run straight up the field, get up the field with that. But, you know, you can't panic right now. It's just the little things you've got to clean up. Don't turn the ball over. Don't give them short fields. Obviously, defensively, don't give up the big play. And those are things that you've got to preach since day one, and I know they have been. Uh, they've just been on the wrong end of that. So Kelly not credited for the sack but gets the tackle. And it'll be third down and eight for Monta Vista. Turner. Throw. Catch by Breedlove. 40. Spins tackle down at the 46-yard line. And the Mustangs will get right back up onto the football. The clock will temporarily start, or stop rather, in, until the chains are set. They're not set. They'll wind the clock anyway. Fifty nine sprint, keep attacking. Nice touch throw right there. Very risky, but very nice touch on that. Rolling out to your left, dump, dumping it right over that linebacker. That's a very tough throw to make for a right handed quarterback rolling to his left, trying to put some touch on it over the top of the linebacker. Very risky, but he performed that very well. So Breedlove with the catch. And he gets out of bounds. So I think the bye is, you know, you'd hate to go into the bye with a loss. I get it. But it's a chance to correct some plays and deflect it, and it's out of bounds. Kenser tried to come up with the deflection, but he's ruled out by the side judge. Really long throw, right? Ball's in the air for a long time. You know, I think he threw to the wrong level. If you look back, we talk about levels. This is a good opportunity right here to see the different levels. You've got a deep route, a medium route, and a short route. And he threw the deep route, but if you look at the, the number two receiver, he runs a short little out, or the three receiver, he's wide open, and that's the, the guy where he line. needs to throw right there at the 40-yard line. And I think, you know, and we always use the bye week as also a self-scout. And Turner, you know what? You need to just get out of bounds. And I believe this is going to be on Turner. You're, you've got, this is game, this is your fourth game or your fifth game. You don't want to injure your shoulder. And, you know, and the play is, the, they're designed to help the quarterback not take shots, unnecessary shots. And right there when Another you're running fifth. out of bounds, that's something that they're, they're going to flag that at every level right there because the quarterback is told not to get hit. And if you're running out of bounds and then come in and do that. I, I understand he's frustrated, and, uh, and it's an opportunity to lay a lick on somebody, but, but you've got to hold your composure. But it's that. okay for the receiver to be ups, uh, frustrated. It's okay for the defensive back. It's okay even for the coach to be frustrated. But for a quarterback, you know, you've got you've to maintain that. And he's a young quarterback. He's, he's just literally making his sixth high school start, but – those are things that during the bye week that he needs to work on. And a sack. Rafael Alvarez, the 5'10 junior, with the sack. Not a lot that Braden could do right there. He wanted to step up in the pocket, but the pocket collapsed so quickly, not much he could do with it. And he actually made a good decision by not throwing that ball uh, where it probably would have been intercepted. Fourth down and 17. Turner, throw, and it's incomplete, and Campolinda will take this ball over on downs. You know, normally a very ill-advised throw when you're rolling right, trying to throw back left. Obviously, fourth down and 20 in this scenario. 
make something happen. You know, that's one of those things, though, as a young quarterback, you do not want to get into that bad habit. You see Patrick Mahomes do it, but he's Patrick Mahomes. And he's been doing it for a long time, and he obviously does things that other people can't do. So you got to make sure you talk to him and film when you see a play like that and say, don't get used to doing that because that's not what we want to do. And, uh, and get him to understand it's okay in this scenario, but don't get in the habit of that. So Campo with the run. So short run for Campo. Parker gets back to the line of scrimmage, and it'll be third down and eight. So the Mustangs started off 3-0 and and lost last week to Amador, and tonight we're at a point where Campolindo ran off 38 straight against the Mustangs. So you got two weeks in a row where you've given up 28 straight points and 38 straight points. And when the dam breaks, it breaks and then some. So it'll be fourth down. And Campolinda will keep their offense on the field. Robeson, a quarterback. Campo working the play clock. And this is going to be a, a good win for them because they're Division One this year. So this is a be one of those things where they measure against D1 opponents. They've got a win here against Monta Vista. Fullback dive, and I believe it'll be good enough for the first down. And that'll be the last play of the game once they set the chains. So on a night where the Mustangs turn the ball over five times and Campolindo takes advantage and to get their second win of the season. And we'll just close it out here from Sam Zakai Memorial Field where Campolindo beat Monta Vista 38-14 to win this non-league matchup. Campolindo moves to 2-1-1 one, and, one, and the Mustangs drop to 3-2. and two. Our next Monta Vista football game on NorCal Sports TV will be Friday, October 13th when the Mustangs host California at 7 p.m in the Mustangs' second EBAL matchup. You've been watching Monta Vista Football on NorCal Sports TV, presented by American Asphalt. Thanks to our crew, Carlos Montanez, Milo Montanez, my broadcast partner, Craig Bergman, statistician Dan Jones, Alan Holter, research, and our director, Luis Rangel. I'm Chris Babcock here in Danville. Good night, and thanks for being on the show.